If you ask pretty much any gamer out there what their opinion on the free-to-play games market is, their answer is probably going to be somewhere along the lines of malicious. Terms like freemium or pay-to-win are often used as blanket statements to try to express that a lot of free-to-play games only seem designed to make as much money as possible. And of course, making money is the goal of every game. It has to be. Games cost money to make, often millions of dollars, and spending millions on a game and then handing it out totally for free obviously isn't sustainable. The real gripe that people usually have with free-to-play games is that it's the money that's driving the experience. You might have no fun if you pay no money, a little fun if you pay five or ten dollars, and a lot of fun if you pay a couple hundred or even a couple thousand dollars. A lot of companies design their games with the sole purpose of promising a better experience the more you pay. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that people actually end up giving those companies so much money. If you pay several thousand dollars a year, you're getting the experience the game was designed around. That's the absolute most fun this game is going to get, because they want as many people as possible to pay that amount. But even if you're getting the absolute best experience possible from that game, you could probably enjoy a 30 or $60 game a lot more and for thousands of dollars less. So why do people stick around and keep giving these free-to-play games so much money? Well, there are a lot of tricks that companies employ to get people to keep paying for their games. They slowly ramp up the amount you have to spend to make you feel like you've made an investment and you can't just stop playing now. They never have you spend those thousands of dollars on one or two purchases, instead splitting it into hundreds of different purchases so it's harder to quantify how much you're actually spending. But in this video, I want to take a look at one of the more innocent looking ways game companies can trick you into spending more money. And this tactic isn't limited to the free-to-play market. It's employed by thousands of games from thousands of different companies. What is this tactic, you ask? In-game currencies. That might initially sound unrealistic. In-game currency is just something games have to have, right? Well, that isn't exactly true. Take a game like Hearthstone. Hearthstone does have an in-game currency, but that currency is never connected to actual, real-life money. You can't purchase gold in the game with real currency, and while the game does have transactions using real currency, they all outright say how much they cost, so you can easily figure out whether or not that amount is worth it for you. Now let's look at how in-game currency can be used to trick you into spending more. As an example for this, I'm going to be using the free-to-play MOBA, Smite. There are a few reasons for this. One, I have played a lot of Smite, and I've spent a lot of money on it, so I'm pretty aware of how the system works. And two, Smite, as far as free-to-play games go, is pretty tame. You can technically get all of the game's characters for free, it would just take an extremely long time. More realistically, there is one $30 purchase you can make called the Ultimate God Pack that allows you to get every character, including ones to be released in the future, forever. I first bought this way back in 2013, and I'm still getting new characters every couple of weeks to this day. Given that having every god is often pretty important to the gameplay, especially if you're playing competitive, you can basically look at Smite as a very well-made $30 game with a great free trial. Besides the god pack, the only other purchases in Smite are for gems, Smite's in-game currency, which can only be used to buy cosmetic items. Smite is pretty honest about its purchases, and in a market surrounded by games that only exist to essentially steal your money, it's a high-quality experience that you can enjoy for a reasonable price, and even no money at all if you're not trying to play the game super seriously. But even this well-made, honest game still uses an in-game currency that is linked to real-life money, and it still uses it to trick you into making more purchases even if those purchases don't change the gameplay at all. So how do Smite and other games with in-game currencies achieve this? Well, there are a couple of tricks certain games use, but it boils down to creating a disconnect in the player between the in-game currency and the actual money they spend on it. Studies have shown that people paying for purchases using a credit card versus physical currency tend to be willing to pay more, because it's harder to quantify what you're spending without actually being able to see it. In-game currencies are like another layer on top of that. At least with a credit card, you're aware of the value of the amount you're spending. You spend your entire life using that currency, so you know what you want to get out of a $20 purchase, and you know whether or not the product you're buying is worth $20 to you. With in-game currencies, you can't make that judgment as easily, simply because you don't have the experience with the value of each gem or coin or whatever. And game companies use those tricks I mentioned to intentionally make that judgment harder to make. The easiest one to spot is how there is never a direct, consistent exchange rate. It's never one gem for one dollar, or ten gems for one dollar. You're always going to get a different rate depending on how much you pay, and various ever-changing sales only make this harder. The smallest gem purchase you can make in Smite is 200 gems for five dollars. That's 40 gems for a dollar. The next purchase up already changes things. 400 gems for eight dollars ends up being 50 gems for a dollar. That's obviously a better deal, but it also makes it a lot harder for you to figure out how much a 200 gem skin is worth in real money. 
It could be either $5, $4, or more likely, some mix of the two, given that all of your gems aren't coming from one purchase. And with five other gem purchases you can make, each with different exchange rates, keeping track of how much gems are actually worth becomes nearly impossible. And it's not only the purchases that can do this. Smite and other games will often give you chances to get this currency for free. That seems like it would be losing the company money, but it's actually doing the opposite, by intentionally making the in-game currency worth less real money in your head. If you have a couple thousand gems and a few of those were earned through playing, you might not even try to make the conversion into real life dollars, because some of those you didn't even have to spend money on. Giving you quote unquote free money can actually trick you into spending more money in the long term. The end goal of in-game currency is to make the currency not feel like currency. You didn't just spend any real money, you spend in-game coins or gems. And that takes away our inherent pain of spending. The reason we weigh up the value of a product in our head normally is because we don't want to let our hard-earned money go to waste. We want to have as much money as possible, and losing some of that money doesn't feel good. So we want to make sure we're losing it for something worthwhile. We wouldn't feel that pain if we didn't feel like our money was something we needed to hold on to. The goal of in-game currency is to make it feel like just another digital item. Something we don't need to be worried about using, so that we're more willing to use it, and thus more willing to buy more of it later. Smite does use this tactic, but at the very least in Smite, all of those purchases are cosmetic. If you're just playing the game for the game, you don't have to worry too much about being cheated. But in other less honest games, this isn't the case. When spending that in-game currency promises to make the game more fun, to give you a competitive edge, or to unlock more content, it becomes even easier to spend it, and since the developers are trying to make sure you don't even know how much you're spending, this can quickly become dangerous. I'm not even sure every company that does this does it consciously. From a design and development perspective, in-game currencies are just easier to work with than a purchase with real money that has to be verified every single time. And having different exchange rates is just the standard, and if you look at it a certain way, it may seem like you're even helping the consumer by giving them better deals. But in the end, all these practices do is make the consumer more willing and more likely to waste their money on something they don't need. As a consumer, there's a pretty simple way to avoid this. When you're playing a game and you're about to make a purchase with gems or coins or whatever, ask yourself, if the game was asking me to pay real money for this, would I do it? Work out what the item would be worth to you, and if you bought that currency you're using, just do some quick math to work out how much you're actually spending in real dollars. That way, in-game currencies will actually start to feel like currency, and you can keep game companies from tricking you into spending money on a purchase that isn't worth it.